Welcome to the Best Kept Secrets podcast where we share our best kept secrets about life, love, God and everything in between. Hi guys, welcome to Best Kept Secrets episode uh, 6 of season 3. We're actually halfway in, or actually more than halfway into season 3. I hope you guys have been enjoying the conversations we've been having. Today we're having a conversation that is very near and dear to my heart. But before we get into it, if you don't know, this is the podcast where we talk about love, life, God, and everything in between. We have a special guest with us today. I will let her introduce herself because I let my guests hype themselves up, tell us everything that they're doing. And this lady has a lot of things that she's doing. So welcome. And Thank you. Tell us everything. Asante Sana, you're very lovely. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so my name is Muthoni Mukiri. I am an author. I am a mindset and personal development coach. I'm a media personality. I am a wife. I am a mother. Uh, and most importantly, I practice coaching. I focus on healing uh, trauma. I focus on self-awareness, mastering your emotions, dealing with fears and shame, to live the life you've always wanted, to live happier, beautiful, healthy lives, Yeah, to get even into happier relationships. And I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. I told you guys she has a lot of things she does. Miss K, your introduction. <laughs> That's what I'm yeah, uh, Mother, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yes. love that for you. Mm. So today we're talking about toxic relationships mm -hmm. and healthy relationships, how to start your healing journey once you leave those situations. Mm -hmm. How do I even know I'm in a toxic relationship? So mm -hmm. maybe we can start there. Mm -hmm. um, we will. We both have our personal experiences with being in such situations. So maybe you can start by telling us your story and how, so we can see how to identify if we're in such a situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, since I started dating, uh, oh, sounds like a long time ago, like uh, maybe 21, 22, mm -hmm. um, since I started getting into relationships, I don't think I was ever in any relationship that felt safe or that mm. felt good mm. um, uh, but eventually I got into this relationship when I was in around my mid-20s that uh, I dated a narcissist. I mm -hmm. talk about it so much and it was toxic, it was draining, it messed with my self-esteem, I was sad, I was crying. Once at that time I was a news anchor for Inoro TV, mm -hmm. I used to work for Inoro TV and I remember, I, you know, you're so celebrated as a news anchor. People want to say hi to you. They want to take selfies with you. But when you leave that studio, mm. the other end in my relationship, insults, mm -hmm. and ghosting and yeah. making me feel like, you know, um, you have nothing to offer, the mm. gaslighting and all that. So I was broken and I was hurting. I, I wanted it to end. Mm -hmm. I could feel this is wrong because I yeah. used to cry a lot. I had a lot of anxiety. I used to feel bad, mm -hmm. but I didn't know how to. Mm -hmm. Until we uh, one day we had a fight and it escalated and we didn't talk for a while. And I decided, and I, then I went for a meeting. There was a therapist and I decided to try therapy. Mm -hmm. Actually, when I went for therapy, um, I was so broken and I had gone for therapy because I thought I had lost a good man. Oh. Yeah, but when I started narrating my story because he was so insecure, like he used to tell where I was every time. It, it's like he had stalked my whereabouts. Mm -hmm. He also had tracked like my phone. He had tracked my MPSA statements and all those things. So mm -hmm. when I went for therapy and I was telling her and I was, I was feeling like I'm the problem. I'm mm -hmm. the, he's a good man. It's yeah. me. Oh, no. Yeah, but then she could see. And mm -hmm. then she was the one who told me he was a narcissist. That's the yeah. first time I heard about narcissists. Mm -hmm. So and so I went to read about it. And when I went to Google, he was all there on Google. Mm. It's like they had inter, they had yeah. uh, they used him, him as the yeah. example. Yes, yeah. he was he was there. So and then now I started my healing journey. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, for me, mm. um, it's actually quite similar to yours. Mm -hmm. Ours was how long? My, mine lasted two years. Two years. Yes. Mine was close to five years on and off. Mm. Um, I actually told you that earlier and you were like, hey, you had a lot of time to give. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I did. I had a lot of my Because that's a whole degree. Give. <laughs> that's a whole degree in internship. Degree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I really I really gave of myself a lot. It left me drained. Um, 
I lost a lot of weight. I was borderline, borderline underweight. I developed ulcers. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I developed yeah. ulcers <laughs> because of the stress. Mm. Um, it was a very hot and cold situation. So I wouldn't know what version of him I was getting when mm. I wake up in the morning. Yeah. Sometimes I'd get a very nice, loving boyfriend. Mm. Then other days... He doesn't even want to talk to me. And when he talks to me, he's mean, he's rude, he's just gaslighting me. So I had a lot of anxiety and it showed up in... Because, you know, your body keeps score, like your yeah. body actually feels when, you, when you're stressed. Um, actually, it's so funny now when I'm stressed, because now my ulcers disappeared after I left the situation. Now when I'm stressed, they, they my eye... with him. Eh? With him, <laughs> yeah. the ulcers went. <laughs> but now when I'm stressed, my eye twitches. That's mm. as much as, as I get these days. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it was just a lot of that. So there was a lot of lying. There was a lot of infidelity. Um, there was just, it was just horrible. It, a lot of like manipulation, gaslighting. I used to doubt my sanity a lot. Actually felt crazy yeah. a lot of the time. I mm. was like... He, I know this is what's happening, but it doesn't feel like that or he's not allowing that to be a reality yeah. for me. Yes. Yeah. So luckily I had a great group of friends who used to call me out and be like, Sharon, that man is not good for you or that relationship is not healthy. Mm. And I'm just like, but I love him, yeah. <laughs> but I want to stay. And I stayed and I stayed and I kept taking him back and all of that. So... Mm. That is, in a nutshell, how I found out that I was in a toxic relationship. Mm -hmm. um, actually, the f I think when I had a realization was I went to, I, I did my master's in psychology. So when class and our lecturer was teaching us about narcissism as well, and he says casually, oh, you know, some of you here are dating narcissists and you don't even Boy. know. <laughs> I was like, that. Who sent you? Yeah. Who, have you been in my bedroom? How do mm -hmm. you know that? Have you been in my house? Mm -hmm. How do you know that? That's when I was like, I realized, okay, maybe this is... Now I see my friend's POV. Now I see why, yeah. what people are seeing. Because mm. I was in the in, I was in the inside looking out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's how I found oh, out. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if those are like the things you're going through. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This video you're not is alone. for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And a lot of women also have gone through a lot of unpleasant relationships. Mm -hmm. The point is to realize and yeah. to work on yourself. Love is a beautiful thing. And yeah. you wanting to fall in love, you wanting to be loved, you wanting to be vulnerable to open up. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So imagine if you loved the wrong person that way, how much you would love the right person, mm. how beautiful it would be. Yeah. So if you're in such a situation, don't be so hard on yourself. It's okay. When you know better, you do better. Yeah. yeah. I think actually... It's. I feel like it's the it's the standard of relationships how they are right now that makes people stay in such situations because the bar is so low. The bar is literally in hell that you think that ah see this is how men behave. You know he we had even got it to a point where he was telling me Sharon all men cheat and you have to be okay with that. That's what he told me and I believe he wasn't it. even denying like I'm no, cheating like everybody. Wow. He was so very open saying? about yeah. it. And he told me all men cheat and mm -hmm. you have to be okay with it. And it got to a point where I stopped fighting it. And I was just like, maybe he is right. Maybe all men cheat. Mm -hmm. So now when I left that situation and I got into a healthier relationship, I was just like, hiya, why are you not cheating? Or why are you not doing things yeah. to... Or I would start looking Am for... Am I you're hiding better? Am I you're just yeah. better at, at hiding? hiding you yes. know, it got to a point where he stopped <laughs> hiding mm. at all and he was you know when they say serial cheater mm. serial. We, call, we call them chronic cheats chronic cheats like uh, multiple them. women multiple times i've had conversations with these women as well and they've told me everything that he wasn't telling me and he was just like you know women the problem with you guys is that um you leave and you'll come back and I left yeah. and I came back. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. the thing. So yeah. when we continue to show men or show women who treat us badly, that that's just the standard of relationships and that's okay. Things are never going to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People will just continue doing the same thing. Be like, oh, I'll cheat. I'll get caught. I'll grovel for a bit. I'll do nice things for a yeah. bit. Then she'll take me back. Or Love he'll bombing. take me back. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Exactly. There's something you said about the bar has been set so low. Mm -hmm. um, I know where you're coming from. However, no one has set any bar. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. We set our own bars. Yeah. When you know better, like we're saying, when you know better, yeah, you do better. Yeah, we do better. Also, mm-hmm. another thing, like as as a victim uh, in an abusive relationship, you also have a part to play. I say in every relationship, it needs your presence and your mm-hmm. participation. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when we say you also have your role to play, it doesn't mean you wanted to be beaten or you yeah. asked for him to cheat. Mm-hmm. But the mere fact that the first time he did it or the first time you saw him disrespect you, you say, stayed there or you came back like you were leaving and coming back, mm-hmm. you enable it. Yeah. So everyone, so we also have to take responsibility for the role we played in our own suffering and take accountability because if you do not take accountability you will keep going from relationship to relationship being a victim feeling yeah. like you you have no power or you have mm-hmm. no control over your own life yeah yeah i love what you've said because it actually brings me to one of the points that i'd written down i write things down because i forget so mm-hmm. if you see me reading, writing is a good thing it's fine yeah it's i usually forget but yeah. i wrote um Nothing will change until you face yourself. Yeah. Until you hold a mirror up and see that you're in a pattern and mm. you're enabling the pattern, you won't get unstuck. Yeah. Um, and I think what helped me in my healing journey is that I had to realize the role that I had played in the toxic relationship. Yeah. Because a relationship has two people. Mm. There are things he did, yes, but there are things I also allowed, yeah. right? And mm. there are things that also I realized that even went back to my childhood, why was I allowing this man to treat me like this? Why was I okay with a hot and cold situation? Yeah. Didn't I think that I wanted more? Did I think that I deserved more? Yeah. I realized that I had self-worth issues. I had self-esteem issues that I was letting him de- define my self-esteem and my self-worth. Um, so until I faced myself, mm-hmm. I, I was going to continue. I would have left him yeah. and I would have gone into another relationship mm-hmm. and it would have been a whole other toxic relationship just with someone different. Mm. So I would say the first step to healing is definitely facing yourself. And I was a serial data. I wouldn't allow myself periods to be, be single. Uh, to be single yes. Because uh-huh. I was scared of facing myself. I was mm. scared of being alone because yeah. I wasn't okay with who I was. Mm-hmm. I wasn't comfortable with who I was. So actually we were sharing earlier and I told you I took like a one year sabbatical I didn't date. I wasn't entertaining any men. I was just like, you know what? There are things within me that I need to work on. I went to therapy. I did the self-work and I did all of that. Then I got to a point where I was just like, okay, I don't feel perfect, but I feel like I'm at a place where I can allow love to enter my life again. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Wonderful. It's good you've spoken about childhood trauma because... It's the it's the basis of yeah. a lot of the things that we go through. The first relationship you have with a man as a woman is with your father. Yeah. Uh, and so if that relationship was, if he was emotionally unavailable, he was abusive, he was hot and cold and all those things, we keep replaying the same relationship mm-hmm. because you didn't see it. You didn't, you, that's the first example you yeah. have. We say your childhood wounds shows up in your adulthood relationships yeah. because the first um, relationship of such a kind was with your dad. Mm-hmm. The second one is in your love relationship. So if you had to constantly look for approval from your parents or from your dad, you didn't get it. You will still look for the same inner relationship. Mm-hmm. You will still keep chasing it yeah. until you give yourself that, what you did not get in your childhood. Yeah. We call it reparenting yourself. You give yourself the love, what he didn't give you. So such that you go into a relationship without having a gap or a space you're waiting for someone else to fill because they mm-hmm. can't, they have their own gaps to fill, yeah. you know. So if you don't heal your childhood trauma, you keep, we say women date their dads. You will yeah. date and marry your father. And when yeah. you look at and maybe, men date their moms. Yes, mm-hmm. and, and, until you do the work. Thank mm-hmm. you for saying that. So if you don't heal, you keep, you, you're still that little girl, girl inside, looking for yeah. approval or trying mm-hmm. to prove her worth or th- thinking it's okay to be abused or to mm-hmm. be treated badly yeah. until you heal and you love that girl and you give her what she didn't get mm-hmm. you will keep trying to um fulfill her yeah. in toxic relationships mm-hmm. yes that's great because one thing that i identified within myself is that i was such a chronic people pleaser uh because as a child i was taught that when i perform or when i do certain things that's when i'm I receive love, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. in relationships, I would give of myself um, thinking that that's how love works. Mm-hmm. When I give you something or when I do something for you, then you love me back. I wasn't taught that you existing as you are is enough and I can love you as you are. Yeah. So in this relationship, I was literally working in his company for free. 
I didn't get a single coin. I was in school doing my masters at the same time I'm working for him. So I have exams and I have things I'm doing, then I have to leave the office in on Aboda, go do my exam, come back, work late nights, work till midnight, work all I wasn't getting paid a single dime. Mm-hmm. I was literally step parenting his child because he was a he was a parent um co-parenting. I was doing so many things and then when I realized that I'm toxic in my own ways was when I was expecting things back. You know, cuz I feel like when you do something to some for someone and you're like, but I did this for you, but I did that for you as opposed to I'm just giving it to you um because I love you. I don't yeah. expect anything back. Yes, and also because yeah. you're giving everything. So you have nothing yes, left. Yes, I have nothing yeah. left. But or, or din- after you heal now you stop giving everything. You just yeah. give what you're okay what with you're exactly. giving. So you have your cup yes. full still. Yes. So you don't expect expect them to fill your to cup to fill your cup yeah. yeah people pleasers often start out as parent pleasers yes i was i hope that was what i was yeah, yeah. and yeah. actually it comes from a place of fear fear mm. of abandonment fear of mm. rejection yeah because you know if you say no they might not like you very yeah. much and you know that for you is so important they have to really mm. like me yeah. they have to accept me yeah it comes from a place of fear mm. yeah Yeah, go yeah. On. Yeah, no, I I, oh, I was definitely a, a parent me pleaser too, me for too. sure. It's yeah. yeah. And we say like mm-hmm. as a people pleaser we are always recovering. Yeah. There's always that need, you know, yeah, you there's really always want that, to belong. Uh, yes. Yeah, you really want to be loved <laughs> yeah. and accepted. Um and it was only until I got into another relationship that I was now because mm-hmm. in the beginning I was really trying to perform, I was really trying to do this, I was really trying to do that for him and it got to a point where he was just like you know you do realize that even if you didn't do anything for me, even if you just existed as you are, I would still love you. Yeah. And that was so hard for me to understand because I was just like what do you mean I can't like Yani, you don't want mm. me to do anything for you. Yeah. And he was like, no, I, de- I didn't decide to date you because of what you can do for me. Yeah. I just dated you because I like you as a person, mm. not the things that you can do for me. Yeah. And that was so hard like for me. Like he dated you because of who you are, not yeah. what you can not do. Not what I can yeah. do for him. Yeah. And that wasn't my situation before. He was dating me because of the things I could offer him, the whatever he saw in me that he could take, you know, mm. because narcissist take they take and yeah, take yeah they take they mm. literally leech on you supply <laughs> yeah yeah you're their supply yes. yeah you're their yeah. supply and then mm. when they can't get anything more from you they leave you and go find a new supply mm-hmm. yeah so i, I say mm-hmm. narcissists are the worst people you can date because they mess with your self esteem who you yeah. think you are yeah uh yeah they leave you dry they suck everything and then yeah. they leave you and go suck someone else yeah. they leave you are trying to pick your pieces and all that mm. you like you, what hap- what happens is you die you stop existing as sharon mm-hmm. you start existing as sharon for him like yeah. whatever his name was mm-hmm. for example let's say peter mm. sharon wa peter no there's no sharon alone yeah, yeah. Mm. so you stop you like you die like but when you die yeah you it's just yeah because mm-hmm. you have to be what they want you to be yeah yeah Oh yeah, um I was even told, oh why are you wearing that? Why are you <laughs> I think they they go to the same school, they're given <laughs> the same script. Wanakuja tu ana rules. Yeah, they just come and yeah. apply to everyone because mm. I was even told, oh I love Kambua. Kambua, I love her. She's been on here. I was like, why don't why why don't you dress more like Kambua? She's such a nice woman of God. Blah blah. blah. Like, why would he like, tell you that? I mean Girl, That's me. Yeah. <laughs> I love to watch is my friend too, <laughs> me too but it's the comparison. Like, it's the yeah. comparison. Plus, yeah. It's the, you know, it's even if outside of Kamboa there are always other women that yeah. you would compare me with and mm. pick from here, pick from there. Why aren't you like this person? Why like yeah. I was never enough and then because I'm a people pleaser I'm performing I now I'm trying yeah. I'm trying. Karibu ni change wardrobe yangu. Niweza kambo where do you shop? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Um something else that I had written mm-hmm. was um don't gaslight yourself out of your own pain. So I say that because I think people who go through abusive toxic relationships tend to downplay it and they're like it's not that bad. You know what I mean especially people who are in physically abusive relationships um a lot of people just don't think it's that bad and they defend 
their abusers and it's the whole what is it called what is that concept called which one Stockholm syndrome. Oh yeah. Yes, where like you start you, making excuses you for, uh, for to, your abuser. Yeah. Yes. And when people ask you about it you're like, "Ah, it's not that yeah. bad." You yeah. know, so allow yourself to actually feel the pain to be broken to so be you can broken mend. so you, you can, can mend. Yeah. Yeah, it, to heal, you have to stop pretending it doesn't hurt. Yeah. You have to feel the pain to mm. go through all the emotions so you can work through the pain. Yeah. You know there's no way around it. Mm. And also you cannot get healing the same place you got hurt. The oh, person who hurt yeah. you cannot heal you. Mm. You know, sometimes when you're hurting, when you, maybe you that space you've broken up, you uh, you think the only way to heal is to get back together. If only he could change, if only he could stop cheating, if only he could. That is not where you'll find your healing. Mm. You, they will continue breaking you until they have nothing left to break. Yeah. And then now they will leave you actually. Mm. I'm done with you. They will go on to They'll the next. They'll go find someone yes, else. Yeah. yeah. So maybe we can start by looking at what we define as an unhealthy relationship. Yeah. Or how to know maybe that relationship is not working or mm. it's hurting you more than yeah. it's helping you. Uh, the first sign is usually um, the bad outweighs the good. Mm -hmm. Like out of 10 things about the relationship, only two are good. Yeah. Maybe he calls you to say hi. <laughs> Or maybe he said happy birthday on your birthday. Yeah. Or mm. maybe he said happy birthday on Facebook. Sometimes the things you hear, you might know, but he said happy birthday on Facebook. I'm thinking, oh, girl. Yeah. So, yeah. but then maybe the other eight times he has called you names. Oh, you are a slut. Why are mm. you wearing that? Mm. Oh, you know, I didn't even want to date you. Mm. Oh, are you sleeping with your boss? It's just allegations and yeah. mean things. Maybe the other time he slapped you. So if the bad outweighs the good. If you're hurting more than it's good, mm. then you need to rethink that relationship. Yep. Yes. Another thing is if that if you feel you're betraying yourself in that relationship. Actually, how to know you're in the right relationship, the right relationship, the right job, the right environment is that you don't betray yourself mm. to make it work. Mm -hmm. If you feel this is what I believe in as Modoni, I want to be a coach, I want to do this, but then I have to stop doing it to make the relationship work, you have to stop being the person you want to be or you have to stop living your life the way you want so you can have this person in your life, then it, you probably it's probably not the right relationship for you. Mm. If it's boxing you, if it's stepping on you rather than, uh, you know, uh, strengthening your wings so you can fly. Yeah. And that's why we say one of the most decisions you make in your life is the spouse you choose. Yeah. Because they can either shrink you yeah. and, and, you know, uh, press you to the ground or they can elevate you. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if um, you're in a relationship where you feel you're betraying yourself, mm -hmm. that is not who you want to be. You're not allowed to do what you want. You're not allowed to be the... You can't even... You know, you should be in a relationship where you're yourself, where you can goof around. Your dry jokes are welcome. It's okay. Yeah. You know, it's okay to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to be perfect. And that person still loves you the way you are. Yeah. That's now a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. Yes. I see you're, the way you're looking at me. What's going yeah, through no, your I'm mind? Just like, I, <laughs> yeah. I want you to share <laughs> yes. more other mm -hmm. signs we can tell that mm -hmm. this is healthy or unhealthy. Yeah. Those are the two major signs. Uh, the third one is if there's any form of abuse. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we think abuse is if he's beating you around, slapping you. But even things like ghosting, we call it yep. emotional abuse. And actually it's the worst form of abuse because it questions you as a person. You question mm -hmm. your worth. Like you're saying you're feeling crazy. Yeah. Like, am I okay? Didn't I just say that text message? Mm. You know, but then the person is like, what do you mean? My phone has been yeah. here. No one has, you yeah. know, and you saw it. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you feel like... Um, that relationship is a relationship where you cannot be yourself. It's a relationship where there's violence, where there's any form of abuse, where you're not... You, we always feel it in our gut. Yeah. You always feel something is not right in this mm. relationship. Yeah? yeah, You keep questioning things. You keep going to Google. Oh, if you find if yourself... You're already yeah, searching for answers. How to make a man happy. Or is he a narcissist? How do I know? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Actually, I was laughing when you were saying the phone thing or mm -hmm. the questioning your reality thing because yeah, I yes. remembered there was once in this relationship um because I was working for him or with him mm -hmm. so he'd come pick me and then we go to the office or wherever it is we were working and so we're in traffic on Bagathi road I think that somewhere around there 
So cuz the traffic wasn't moving it was really early in the morning at like 6 7 a.m. so I lie on his shoulder then he was on his phone so the message that was there said um something something babe and it was a conversation between him and a girl that you know was a topic of conversation in our relationship and he would tell me there's nothing going on she's like my sister kwanza that one for she's like mm, my sister I'm a cousin uh, she's just a friend she's like a, i see her as a little sister there's nothing yeah yeah mm-hmm. anyways so and i see her name i i didn't see he, she had he had sent her a picture and she responded saying something babe so i literally like stukad and i was like what's that about and literally this man was just like oh no she it wasn't babe it was baba <laughs> oh okay i'm not even joking <laughs> The, but, but then, then you knew what you had I seen. I know what I saw. Yeah. I know, and I kept telling him, I know I saw babe. Yeah. He was like, she was saying something, <laughs> something, baba. Yeah. You know how men, like boys call each other, yeah, baba, like cheers, yeah. baba, whatever, mm. yeah. Mm. And he's like, I told you, we're just homies. That's why she's calling me, baba, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, show me then. So that we prove that I'm crazy mm. and I'm wrong. Yeah. And it, was, it wasn't babe. And he refused. The entire day I had to see him because we were working. And I kept... He just kept denying, denying, denying till by the end of the day I was like okay maybe I didn't see babe. Yeah. Maybe I saw something else. But there was a part of me that knew what I saw. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so he made, he made you feel crazy. Exactly. Like didn't I did just I, did, yeah. yeah. So, so that's the, gaslighting the by gaslighting, the way. The gaslighting. Yeah. yeah might now not if know. you wanted the actual example of gaslighting because yeah. gaslighting is thrown around a lot mm. that's now what gaslighting is. Yeah. Okay. You know a lot of people stay in when we talk about toxic and healthy relationships because you want to see the good. But mm. you see it does this for me. How yeah. about, what about the other side? Mm-hmm. The way uh, so we think we want to stay in those relationships because we we are hoping people will change. Yeah. I am a coach and I have uh, I'm practicing and I have clients and sometimes I get ladies telling me uh you know I feel I can do better. I feel like if only he would do this. If only he would work on himself mm. uh, when it comes to this. If only he mm. would go back to school if only he would. But then it's such a waste of time staying there hoping someone will change. Yeah. I say think about how hard it is to change yourself. Oof. You yourself, you know change I need to so change. Hard. Think yeah. about how hard it is. Now think about trying to change someone who doesn't even think they need to change. Mm-hmm. Like you need more than witchcraft. You know, <laughs> but then we're sitting there yeah. saying, you know, I wait, I'm waiting for him to I know he can change. You know we've spoken about it. Yeah. If you think you can do better, then do better. Mm. Yes. And also mm-hmm. Um, maybe we can there's something you wanted to say go on no finish first then I'll see I wanted to go on oh yeah go on yeah, yeah. yeah. I, we, there's something called dating with purpose and I've mm-hmm. spoken about it in my book mm-hmm. where you actually before you start dating you know this is what I want mm-hmm. this is why do I want this and this is what I'm also about yeah such that you don't settle for anybody because mm-hmm. if you don't have a blueprint this is what I want in my relationship then anybody coming and telling you Mudoni I love you Mudoni I want to take you for dinner then you think this is you know without actually um getting to ask serious questions without yeah. uh, getting to ask is this person uh his character his values what he stands for is mm-hmm. it in alignment with what I want can yeah. he give me what I want long term mm-hmm. you know So we don't do that. So we go into it blindly. Mm-hmm. You know you're just there wallowing, swimming everywhere, yeah. Nairobi clubs and then you yeah. meet a guy and then you're just going with the flow. Mm. Yeah. I like that because um we've actually shared slightly about this in a conversation we did about things we learned in our singleness. Mm-hmm. Um and before I went because when I took my sabbatical when I was working on myself and doing the self work and healing, I also asked myself what are my values because i didn't know yeah. me i was just existing as a person i yes. was just floating in the world mm. so i started to i actually wrote them down i did a yeah. i did an exercise where it asked me to write my five values down and which ones in a partner are important to me and are negotiables which one are, which ones are my flexible with mm-hmm. so now when i went back into the dating scene i was more intentional because yes. i knew what i was looking for yeah. i wasn't just going to accept anything and i did turn down men who i felt like okay here we don't align here i'm flexible so i'm okay if you don't have it completely uh but something else you had shared earlier we had talked about before the camera started rolling was just about how sometimes you have a friend or even a client and you know that relationship isn't good for them you you can advise them but 
they won't leave. So how do you offer support to someone who is in such a situation but they don't want to leave? Okay. So I have clients who are married. I have those that are just dating. Yeah. Those are many, but they're the single ladies. They just started dating someone. It's not working and all that. For those that are single, like maybe you dated someone for six months or for a year or you're trying to date again, and then I can tell the relationship you're in is not a good one. Mm -hmm. I tell them. I tell them people don't just change. Mm. And you see, for some of these, like narcissists, it's a personality disorder. It's not yeah. something you can pray about. You know, mm. stop, just pray for yourself at this point. So I tell them, mm. I tell them this is not going to end well. Yeah. But then if they, I, it's okay, I don't tell them to leave. I just uh, show, I just open their eyes so okay. they can see and then they decide for themselves. At the same time, I support them in terms if they want to leave. Mm -hmm. I tell them what to do. Um, I tell them things. The most important, the mo the first thing, the most important point, or if you really want to leave a relationship and you're not thinking of coming back, first of all, we say it takes an average woman. Or like let me just say, what's with average? Let me just say a woman. Yeah. It takes a woman up to seven times to leave a relationship that's not working. Okay. Up to so I say if if it's the second time, just extend yourself some grace. It's yeah. okay. Others have gone up to seven times. Me, they... I've done. I did like thirty, even fifty. Yeah, you like still have... <laughs> yes, they have, so it's a, yeah. like an average of seven times. So the first thing is to do the no contact. Yeah, like you leave and then uh, delete, yeah. block, move houses. But if you have houses. a child. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. I was coming to that. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the best way is to go no contact. I say 30, 90, whatever period is okay with you. Even if you're going to start even for two days and you're able to, that's a Not win. Not talk to him for two yeah, days. Yeah, that's also a win. You mm -hmm. know, pole pole to step after, after step. The other thing is to not have a, a gap. You know how sometimes, you say mm -hmm. when you're dating someone, and then you have your um, routines aligned. Yeah. This. On Saturday is game night. On oh, Sunday we go to the park. That's when on Monday we go them. for lunch. Yes. So you mm. usually find that. So if you don't find things to replace that, mm -hmm. you find that you have a gap. You start mm. feeling, ah, I'm an It's mm. just game night. Today's the day we do this. Ama, you feel mm. like texting them. Ama, you feel like texting them. WhatsApp, you feel like texting them. Ama, Instagram. Yeah. So you have to find yourself at that point. Okay. Now, you've been dating, maybe you dated for five years, that guy. Yeah. Now you find yourself single, maybe at 30, at 32. Find mm. yourself single at 32. Mm. Find new things about you. Yeah. Discover your new you at that. You've never been that age. So who are you at 32 single? Mm. So f ask yourself that. Uh, get new hobbies. Start going to new restaurants. Travel. Like, single women, please have your fun. Guy. I, remember, I had a lot of fun when I was single. Mm. I traveled. I bought myself nice things. I just was out here living my best life. Don't have a gap for anyone. If you leave yeah. that relationship, the routines, uh, the game night, when you what you used to do, go for a movie mm -hmm. in the IMAX. Uh, go visit your sister. Yeah, hang out go to Shags. Go and yeah. visit grandma. Yeah, do something different. Get a new, learn a new language. Get a new skill. Discover mm -hmm. different things. Even the same places you're hanging out, change those places. Even yeah, the mutual friends. Triggering. Yeah, even mm -hmm. the mutual friends. Stay away from them mm -hmm. for a while. Because sometimes yeah. you find your routines and everything can. Well, so yeah. don't leave a, a void. Mm. Yeah, because we say like in physics, they say vacuums do not exist. Something mm. will feel that. Mm. And you don't want it to be that guy yeah. or a rebound. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that can, you know, you've not worked on yourself. You're yeah. still vulnerable. So it's easy yeah. to find yourself in another Similar thing. situation. I love you had to yeah. another same way. Am I last five, another five years? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I see you. The way yeah, you're getting tired. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So another thing is to find support, mm. therapy, come for coaching, get friends who support you, read post podcasts, join those. We have those communities on Facebook, yeah. on Instagram, those pages about healing, about people who can support you in your journey. Yeah. Yeah. Those are yeah. Some three of the most, I can say. No contact, mm -hmm. don't have a void, try to find new things, mm -hmm. find support. Yeah. Yeah. And heal. Like yeah. After, yeah. Yeah. I love that because... I, I did no contact when it actually, when actually, when we broke up for real, Sasa, mm, mm. I did no contact. Before I would do no contact and then I guess it's the gaps thing because I didn't know about this gaps thing. Yeah. And then I would you, start yeah. missing him, then the I go voids. back. Yeah. Mm. This time I was actually fed up for real. I blocked everywhere. I did no contact. I moved houses as well nice. because... He would infringe on my space and show up at my house uninvited. Mm -hmm. So I moved houses as well. I found new hobbies. Um, I joined. That a, is so important. Yeah, I joined a Bible study. So now my time was filled up. 
um just doing things yes. with my with my bible study people and i i saw my friends a lot more than i was seeing them before um and anytime i would feel that loneliness because there's like a loneliness that comes yeah. i it would just mean that i need human contact so i would reach out to a friend or someone we go hang out whatever i was very aware of not falling back into the same pattern so i made sure to not involve myself with another man soon another yeah. rebound because i knew i hadn't healed yes. and i would just repeat the same patterns again yeah another yeah. thing stay away from your phone unless it's work and you can actually right now you can actually segment I, we have that on my phone where you can uh, segment your contacts stack your one pg how on is on this i mean you can uh, stay away from your phone if it's work uh, you, you know unaza check emails on your laptop stay away from anything yenye inaweza ku pull back mm. you know how you, you blocked them lakini like, unangoja uone ni kama walijaribu kukupiga yeah you're human it's okay yeah. it's okay and then another mm. thing moving on and breakups are hard yeah it's even like no contact this is someone you had dated for a long time mm. you were in love you thought you had a future together it's it's not going to be easy it's okay but it's worth it because i say when you leave such a relationship or such a situation stop focusing so much on what you're leaving behind you know we were going to be we were going to get married mm. we were going to you know focus on what you're working towards so i have you've left that guy so i'm working towards a life of freedom i'm working towards a better relationship i'm working towards a relationship that will propel me what are you working towards what's ahead because sometimes you focus on unajua unajua look ahead mm. what's what's the need for you when you leave that relationship yeah you'll find yourself yeah you date a man who will appreciate you who will love you who will propel you mm. you know you even find yourself and become happy i was i don't think i was happy in my own space like you say i was mm. never single like mm. I, there was always someone some like yeah. i always had people and i think also even that time when i was seeing the narcissist i think i was also talking to people on the oh, side i think i was okay. yeah so i i got after the breakup you get i stayed for two years and actually my be, my next relation my next boyfriend was my husband now like I, the man cleanse i call it the man cleanse you stay away from men or dating or anything you just spend time with yourself you get to learn yourself you take notes about yourself what are you about yeah. everything yeah. then now uh, you start dating again yeah. so there's something else i wanted to say How, did you do the list what you wanted in a guy oh yes i did mm-hmm. what was in your list my list was um I told God that I wanted someone to take care of me because Aww. I'm a firstborn and yeah. I take care oh. of a lot of people. Black mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um luckily my parents are gracious with it, but you know, I have Kofi Annan, my parents, I have taken up some responsibilities with my brother, even with my friends, I am like the mother hen. So I'm the one always like seeing as everyone eating, is everyone okay? Yeah. All of that. So I was just like you know what i want someone to worry about me i'm always worrying about other people so i told god i want someone will that will treat me will take care of me i said i want someone to treat me with kindness and softness because i don't think that the, my ex was kind to me i don't think he treated me with softness um i said i i prayed for ease that i desire ease because that relationship felt so hard and i was just like anxiety mistaki mm-hmm. ku i don't want to feel like i'm plowing a shamba like i don't want to for it to feel that hard it sh- why should it be that hard so i prayed for ease um i think those are like the top things i remember mm. but there are so many other things as well and i actually got all of those things Yes, yeah. that's what I wanted to say. Mm-hmm. That's why I asked you. Yeah. Because when we say I I come out and I say you need to have a list of what you want. We men I'm thinking I have a list in my head. No, write it down. Yeah. Write it down and stick it somewhere you, where you can cut it. I want it. Sometimes I say mm-hmm. you know even the pettiest things because sometimes we think the list has to cut across. Unajua hii watu watakangi hii. What do you want yourself? Unataka nini wewe bamboi? That's yeah. what I ask like it mm-hmm. has to be um specific to your needs. Mm. If you want him tall, if you want him dark, if you want yeah. him light skin, if you, so I say kila kitu wake up. Now when it comes to the values like you want him to be kind, like yeah. you say you want him god fearing, a family oriented man, mm. all those things. When you do that list, you also have to make sure you are the man, you are the, the woman, woman 
that man can Once, date. Yeah. yeah, you have to make sure you're the woman that man would go for. Yeah. You also have to make sure you're on his list. Meaning you have to make sure everything you've said on that list, you're you have. everything there. Mm. Yes. Mm. Because sometimes we want things, oh, I want him like this, like this, but now the, where the, go could you? Eh. Eh, you mm. will never meet that man anywhere. Yeah. So you have to also raise Elevate their Elevate yourself. Yes, yeah. yeah. That's it's, so, doing the work is a lot. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's so interesting. You're even saying about those like the tall thing or the short, or yeah, light or them. dark and those things, and we trivialize them. See, you just need to see him in yeah, your mind. You need to visualize yeah. him. And I used to tell my friends all the time, yeah, I'm gonna end up with someone short. Because mm. I'm short, so short <laughs> men come to yes. me because I'm a safe space. Yeah. And I I tell my friends. And a safe space. What yeah, does like, that mean in terms yeah, of height? Yeah, like um, um, like I'm safe for them. They won't go for a tall girl. They'll come to oh, someone short like them. Yeah. And I'm like, no, me want a tall man. Nothing specific, really. I don't even have reasons. I'm just attracted yeah. to taller men. Mm. And the, my friends used to laugh at me and they're like, hey, Konza, you're going to end up with the shortest man. I know. I said, God forbid. Mm. And then you see now, mm. you can have, like for me, I had the list. But then now, you know, now you the physically, yeah. una takanini, but huja muona. Yeah. So actually now when we started dating, he was on my list. Like, mm. but now I used to look at him and I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah. you know, mm. like, yeah. yeah. And also pray about it. Pray about That's God the answers, biggest God key. answers prayers, by the way. It's and the also another key. thing. Mm. Sometimes I asked you a question before, mm. like getting out of an unhealthy or, or a toxic relationship and now getting into a healthy relationship. When you used to a lot of being on the edge so much, a lot of anxiety, unpredictability on and off and all those cold and hot, and then now you get into your first healthy relationship. It's usually a, an internal battle. Battle. You, you told me yeah. about that as well. No one prepares you for how hard yeah. it is for your first healthy relationship after an unhealthy one. Yeah. It will feel weird it will feel like there's something weird there's something mm, like they're pretending they're pretending like, yeah. this is really not who they are you question yeah. them all the time because you're on high alert because you're so used to chaos you're expecting chaos and when he doesn't come you're on high alert you question yeah, everything hyper vigilant. That they, yeah you're hyper vigilant yeah you question everything that they are doing and you know it's even exhausting for them to be questioned all the time when they're not doing anything yeah Yes. It is, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and also, mm-hmm. if you date a secure man, they will never date someone who's in insecure. Yeah, yeah. So you you realize, you know, a healthy relationship uh, it needs one healthy individual, another one healthy. come together. Yeah. yeah. So if you want that healthy relationship, you also have to be healthy. You also have it required for me. It required me to really work on myself because, like, you're waiting for him to insult me. Yeah. And then, like, when we used to have a disagreement. Before now we got married, even after, mm. when we have uh, or di- we disagree on something, I'm thinking the relationship is on the line. Like yeah. I'm on high alert, I'm ready yeah. to ghost. Yeah, to like, uh, yeah. like I'm, you know. Mm. But then we are we are disagreeing, and he's still calling me. Like if we are going supposed to go on holiday tomorrow, and allowed to me disagree. What do we do? and begin and I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. Didn't we just, you know, have you, you know, mm. because I was coming from that space mm-hmm. where kukosana kidogo, it's over, kwenda uko, you know. Mm. But then now I'm in this space where we have we have disagreements, but the relationship is not on the line. He still loves me even. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also what it did to me, the fact that you can disagree and you can be yourself with them and they still love you mm. for who you are, mm. it makes you trust them more. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Especially the trust thing. That's where... If you've been cheated on before, mm. that's where your biggest nini is going to be mm. um, in now the new healthy relationship. Mm. Um, and I'm very careful to not make him carry the burden of trust issues that he had nothing to do with. Mm-hmm. Uh, because like I was telling you earlier, I got so, so okay with the concept of men cheating because I was told oh, yeah. men cheat. It's fine. Yeah. You forgive, you move on. Mm-hmm. So now, even when there's no cheating, I'm mm-hmm. questioning, I'm doing all of these things. And you have to establish that trust within yourself even to know that I trust this person and I trust that I am worthy of not being cheated on. Yeah. So I don't have to keep looking for it when it's not there. Yeah. yeah. Another thing about trust is that it also has to start with you. Yeah. Trusting yourself to make the right choices mm. and trusting yourself that you made you made the right decision. Yeah. Choosing him. Mm. And also trusting that in case if he betrays you, he will do the right thing for you. Yeah. Yeah. 
actually, I because love this the, trust that's tangent. That's actually also yeah. what we do also in yeah. marriage. Mm. I love this trust tangent because I think one of the biggest lessons I learned not so long ago mm-hmm. was actually before I entered this relationship, I was really scared that I would enter a situation where I get cheated on again. And I really prayed and literally God asked me, even if you don't trust whoever the man is, why don't you trust that I'll take care of you? Yeah. Why don't you trust that? Because I'll, it starts yeah. with you. Why yeah. don't you trust that I won't put you in a situation where you be hurt like that again? Mm. You know, because I'd prayed, I'd really, really prayed and I told God, I never want to be in that situation again. So I've already placed it in God's hand and I've told him, I never want to be in that situation again. But then I'm still so scared. So God is asking me, so you trust me then, if you've put yeah. this thing in my hand, mm. trust, trust that I won't allow you to be in a situation where that happens to you again. Yeah. 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 So you have to trust let is love delicate. In. Yeah. Trust is delicate and yeah. it's so important in relationships and in marriage as well. So like you say, you have to trust yourself Yeah. that I made the right choice. This is the man for me. And also, you know, sometimes we choose this is the person for me. This is what he's shown me. To, at some people can let you down, mm. you know, and sometimes I also tell my clients, my clients, how do I know he will never, how do I know he will? I ask them, how are things now? I trust mm. him. Things are good. Mm-hmm. I tell them, you will, you don't know what tomorrow holds. You don't yeah. know what will happen. What you have is trust in yourself mm. that in case things don't turn out the way you expect, you will do the right thing mm. for you. and you know the right thing to do for you. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. No. Yeah. So it's it's mm. it's like you're swimming in the it's like you're putting yourself out here. But you know that's what love is about vulnerability, yeah. opening yeah. up, you're, knowing yeah, you could a get potential, hurt. You'll get hurt. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like marriage we say mm. forever. Do you know how long is forever? Mm. You yeah, but then yeah. you trust every year, yeah, day in, day out, yeah. he's gonna be there. Yeah. And you're gonna be together. Yeah. And if so, he lets you down, then you you trust that yourself Yeah, you will do the right yeah. thing. Yeah. Mm. You know what to do. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I love that so much. Um, I'll read my last point as we wrap up. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, I have two points. Okay. But let me read one. So I said, this is actually a book I read when I was doing my healing journey. It's mm-hmm. called, I've shared in one of the episodes before, it's called um, Home or Finding Your Way Home. Something like that. It's by Najwa Zeban. Mm-hmm. I love it I, so I know much. Najwa. Yes, yeah. Najwa. Yes. Najwa is great. Mm-hmm. Um, she's great about healing. Yes, yeah, she's, she focuses on she's healing. great. Yeah. Yes. So she, in her book, she says, if you build your home in other people, you oh. give them the power to make you homeless. Mm, yes. And I loved that so much because I realized that I was building my home in other people. So when they would leave... I had no sense of self. Yeah, you were depending on them. I was depending on them. My identity was tied to them. Mm. And I would just be lost. Yeah, I didn't know who Sharon was. Mm. I didn't know what Sharon liked. Yeah. I didn't know who Sharon was as a person. I was letting other people define that for me. Mm. So I now started to cultivate a home within myself. Yes, yes. Yeah, so I even... Um, it's so funny. I've saved my own number on my phone as home. Yeah, because yeah, now you're home yeah, to I, yeah, to fast. myself. Yes. And sometimes yeah. when I don't have a journal with me and I need to like um text something a text to myself, like I have I text myself on WhatsApp. Mm. <laughs> and I tell I remind yeah. myself things or but I you know you are the most important there. person in exactly. your life. Yes. I will always be here. Mm. Other people will come and go, but yeah, I will I um, I remain constant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I started to cultivate cultivate a home within myself. So even as you start your healing journey or even as you're in a healing process of the healing journey mm-hmm. look at it as cultivating your home we say it we say mm-hmm. we call it um developing a good relationship with yourself yeah with yourself with so relationship so that you have mm-hmm. yourself to rely to, yes, to rely to on rely you on. can rely on yeah. yourself yeah so how do you want this home to look how do you decorate it yeah. do you want flowers in the home do you oh, want this nice. do you want I that yeah that. look at it as a home mm. and then cultivate it like that how do you want that home to look like and then by the flowers and the decorations i mean the, what are your values what are the things that are important to you what are your hobbies who are you as a person what are the friends the who are the people you have around you and then build that build a home within yourself yeah, yeah. so that your identity is not needed on other people i love yeah. that i love that you see it's what we say about happiness um if you depend on other people to make you happy 
you also give them the power to make you unhappy yeah. because you give them them the key to your happiness they yeah. can actually take it away so the key is to like you said i love what you've said with the home mm. develop a good relationship with yourself because personal development is about it doesn't mean people will not hurt you or disappoint yeah. you but you can always go back to yourself mm-hmm. you can always as much as you're crying your heart you can always remind yourself who is sharon yeah. who is modoni what do i stand for what do i want how mm. do i get myself back to that place yeah you know yeah, yeah. so i like that i love that and yeah. you know it's also a very mm. huge responsibility to mm. expect someone to make you happy a lot Imagine. of people don't even know how, what makes them happy so how yeah. will they do you like you met mm. someone maybe you're 30 32 i wanted to ask you age, but no so maybe you're 30 32 35 <laughs> mm-hmm. and then um mm. you meet someone at 35 mm. and you're depending on that person to make you happy like he he just met you you know yeah uh so also people also love you by how also how you love yourself and how mm-hmm. you show up yeah 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 so you can't depend on people to tell you to make you happy they just met you so what makes mm. you happy ask mm. yourself that yeah yeah i agree and just dis- find your discover if you i have clients yeah. who are in their 50s 40s mm. in whatever age you are and you feel lost you feel you uh you're going through an identity crisis mm-hmm. find yourself at that point discover hobbies new yeah. things you can even make new friends travel mm-hmm. just uh, change careers mm-hmm. start over just make yourself happy yeah mm. i agree um the last um, point, actually. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I love you, this yeah. Um The last point I had um, was about soul ties and the concept of soul ties. Mm-hmm. So when I shared what I, you know, about that relationship with my Bible study people, one of the girls was like, sure, you know, maybe this is a soul tie. Maybe he didn't believe in that concept of soul ties. And it can be murky waters to navigate. Um, but outside of even that, w- what I realized is some, is some things are actually spiritual. We look at them from the outside, but once you understand God and how it works, you realize that some things are spiritual. So what I did is that I went into a deep time of prayer and I told God to unlink me from anyone who was not from for me. Because, you know, maybe he had said he had, he had taken me up as his wife and that's what now was happening. But me, I want to leave him. Because, you know, those relationships, they don't want to get left. You try to leave them, they'll come back, they'll yeah. fight, they'll do everything, right? So I actually, you know, I pulled up my spiritual pants and I was like, you know what, I need to pray for this man to leave me alone. Mm. If if we've been spiritually tied, untie us, God, because mm, yeah. I need to move on. And there's no way you're going to be able to move on when you're still tied to someone else. You know, when you're, when it's just, I, I can't fully get into it, but I would say do your research read the word, read what it says about that, and really just pray because some things are spiritual. Um, Not everything is spiritual, but some things are. And sometimes it's important for you to pray so you can get out of some situations. Yeah. Okay. So um, so I, this is what I know, mm-hmm. that God cannot put you in a situation to suffer for the sake exactly. of crying. Yeah. So, and then also, some people hide under Christianity. And I have that yeah. in my sessions to avoid working on themselves, yeah. to avoid going through the mm-hmm. temporary discomfort of having to leave that person, to yeah. actually do better, raise the bar yeah. for yourself to date better. Mm-hmm. So some people hide, you know, it's spiritual. God, who said God would? God, you know, sometimes we see wealthy people, we think they don't know God. They know God very well. Yeah. I want to be wealthy so bad. You know, I want to live the life. And I also have a personal relationship with God. So let's not hide under christianity because we want to stay in situations that yeah. are hurting us god mm-hmm. would never want you to, suffer. Want you to be happy yes yeah. and that's why we say like it's a good thing you've spoken about prayer like pray about your relationships yeah? yeah and work on yourself because also you can sit there talking about soul ties but the moment you work on yourself you realize you can do better mm-hmm. you will move on like with yeah. that soul tie with a soul tie or no mm. i don't i don't think i, ha- I want to talk about soul ties because mm-hmm. um it's more spiritual yeah but uh, I I don't subscribe to that as mm. much. So I say work on yourself. Pray about it. Work on yourself. Mm. And God will not put you in a situation where a man is beating you and insulting you yeah. because you're supposed to be. Oh, no, yeah. with uh, someone who's hurting yeah. you for the sake of spi- mm. it's spiritual, it's all ties. Mm. Leave that yeah. person and work on yourself. 
yeah no i do think that christianity to some extent does yeah. glorify suffering mm. uh and the more you suffer the more meek you are the more humble you are the more all of these things imagine she endured or he endured all of that but imagine you can live a life that is without suffering yes. and you're still humble yeah, and, and be very and you're still have a personal relationship yeah, with god so yes suffering doesn't equal a good relationship yes we yeah. have we have seen uh, people who are married to religious leaders but they suffer and they are beaten and they are going through everything the emotions of everything Yeah so don't stay in a situation suffering because you know a spiritual you know no God did not put you in this world to suffer. We say pain is inevitable. You can feel pain once in yeah. a while. You can go through things, but suffering, you decide to stay in a situation life, that's yeah. hurting you. Yeah. No, God did not intend for you to cry and to hurt and to be sad. Mm. Life is supposed to be fun. Yeah, yeah. we're supposed to enjoy life. Yeah, yes. So um, I've written a lot. Last re- last remarks. Okay, yes. Yeah. That's what I wanted to say. Okay. Thank you for asking me. I've written a lot about my personal stories in my book. I've spoken a lot. I have a whole chapter about dating and relationships. This is my first book, by the way. Yay. So yeah, so this is the chapter. What one appenda na apo? So I've spoken about healthy relationships and yeah. healthy relationships. Uh, some of my personal experiences. what relationships um feel like what what do you think a healthy relationships feel like for you relationship feels like mm, you? it feels safe it feels like i can be myself and not be judged mm. for it it feels um like home we like to say that a lot it feels like home it feels familiar yeah um it feels like friendship yeah. um it feels like we can have fun mm. um it feels like this depth to it that it's not we're not just dating for fun um i mean yeah you can have fun but it feels like there's a purpose behind this um yeah there's so many Mm, so yes. many things, i like yeah. i like how you've described it yeah it's peaceful it's calm it's peaceful it's, it's calm yeah. yeah like you feel that's where you need to be yeah yes. yeah yeah it yeah. feels familiar it's mm. like i know this person but i just met them but yeah yes yeah so anybody going through any hurtful situations you're in an unhealthy relationship or you're just single you're just trying to find yourself i have done over about almost 250 videos on my youtube channel about working on yourself about healing anguka huko binge them take notes i've even done a lot of videos about people pleasing i've done mm-hmm. videos about how to say no without feeling guilty yeah. how to put yourself fast so please if you uh, you're trying to work on yourself and you're trying to find to know how to start go to my youtube channel it's called mudoni's mission you can also when you come to my page you'll know my youtube channel because yeah. i talk about it a lot on yeah. my on my instagram and my social media pages yeah. Mudoni was actually you were actually very highly requested mm. by our people because we did ask them who do you want to see mm. and I even get DMs for Sharon please bring Mudoni <laughs> so I'm glad yeah. that you came and I'm Thank glad you. that you shared all of your wisdom and knowledge with us and like she said there's so much more that mm. you can get on her platforms and her book please buy where can we buy your book so in various bookshops you can check out my social media and meandika where you can get my book uh yes Yeah. Mm. All right. It's uh, about healing. My book is mm-hmm. called Becoming the Woman of Your Dreams. In every one of us there's a woman in our mind, the woman you want to become, the woman you were meant to be. You know, not not the woman who we've suffered a lot and you think you have to settle for the woman you are. Yeah. So this book will help you become the woman you want to be. It's about healing. It's about self-esteem, self-acceptance, loving yourself, trusting in yourself. It is uh, so it's about healing your trauma dealing with shame and fear to live the life you've always wanted. Mm-hmm. Let me read the dedication yeah, please if you do. allow me mm-hmm. Sarah. So this is your your, your this is That's Sharon's copy. copy. <laughs> yes. So the dedication is I dedicate this book to any woman who is living a life of shame trapped in trauma and fear living by the rules set by the society who aspires to rise above her current state and become the woman in her mind this is for the woman who dreams of a life of freedom joy and meaning in her life oh that's so nice i like yeah. i wrote this book to my younger me like the oh, woman when i was that, in my mid early 20s yeah. i wrote yeah, i would have wanted to read this book mm. so yeah yeah Mm. Read the book girl you need it. <laughs> yeah, Santa uh, son I loved this. Me too. I love such conversations. Yeah. yeah. Me too. Yes. Okay, clearly we can keep oh, talking yeah. but we're going to end this conversation here. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for watching if you're watching us on YouTube. 
my hope and desire for every episode that we do is that at least one person is impacted by the conversation that we have impacted to leave that relationship or to start their healing journey or to continue their healing journey or to go back into dating but dating intentionally mm-hmm. so i hope at least one person yes. was impacted if you're watching us on youtube please leave us a comment tell us your thoughts if you're listening to us on our audio platforms thank you for listening i will see you or you will hear me in our next episode bye bye Mwah.